Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. Today I visit with Billy O. O'Donnell near Eureka, Missouri. Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts, uh, coming to you from the studio of Billy O'Donnell uh, near Eureka, Missouri. Uh, please, if you would, uh, welcome back to Spotlight on the Arts, Mr. O'Donnell. I'm truly excited to, again to turn the spotlight on you, uh, Mr. O'Donnell. I want to thank you for the invitation here to your studio, uh, or, or Eureka, uh, Missouri. This is a real pleasure. It's a real honor. Thank you. You was with us last May 15th of the year 2019, so we've seen a lot happen, uh, and the time has passed so fast. Well, for our viewers, could you share with us how you were first inspired in becoming a visual artist? Uh, I know somewhat started right here on this property that was initially uh, you, you shared uh, owned by your grandparents or grandmother. Yes, yes. Well, uh, when I got out of college, everything was in, in the arts was going more to the conceptual. And it was even happening while I was in college. And I, I uh, had a rough go for a little while when I got out of college, but I eventually got a job as an illustrator for the Merits Corporation, which is the third largest art department in America, there was Disney, Hallmark Cards, and then Merits. And that has pretty much gone away now. And uh, and I was one of probably about 25 artists there, illustrators that did artwork and travel posters and things like that. And so what wound up happening was uh, the art world was just getting really frustrating. And so I, I just decided to go back to, to basics and to actually go and get inspiration from the landscape where everyone was actually going away from that. And, and so a lot of the other artists there were just shocked that I was taking an easel out, setting it up and painting the landscape, you know, years ago, like the French Impressionists. They were just blown away with that. and. I enjoyed it. I loved that connection to everything. And then, uh, lo and behold, I found out that there was really a group of artists that were doing the same thing across the country. And to me, that was really kind of exciting. And uh, so that's pretty much how I started getting into more of the landscape, painting the landscape. I see. And that is called plain air. Yes. And we want to talk about a, a, a illustration of our book that you put together uh, in our second part of the show. Um, now, you spoke of basically, I guess, being an illustrator uh, yes. at some point before you turned back to the, lands, the land and the landscapes. Yeah, I, yeah, and I say illustrator, but it really wasn't, I wasn't much of an illustrator. They would come to me and, and they would say, we need, we need you to do some pen, of, pen and inks on a certain destination. And I would look at reference and they had their slide libraries and things like that. And I would create these pen and inks or, because they only had one or two color ink and uh, to run on the press. And other times they'd say, well, we need a four color poster. I see. You know, mm -hmm. on to motivate sales to to promote like the destination and, right. and so uh we would look at the at the the the, the logistics of the, the demographics of the whole company whether it was what age group and what you know whether that it was going to be how the trip was all set up and i'd have fun creating these these paintings for the trips and when i started doing more landscapes I started bringing my landscapes into, oh. and so near the near the end of my 12-year stint, 
they, I had been winning awards with my paintings, and so they started fly international awards. Yes. So they started flying me to destinations, and I would do paintings on location that commemorate business events. I'd do a, a large painting, and that would become, uh, it would go into the corporate collection, and then everyone would get a print of it. So I was, I had a really wonderful job. Yes, it, it really, and if you're familiar with uh, Billy o, O'Donnell's uh, paintings and his talents, uh, uh, it's, uh, he has really made uh, a name for himself internationally. Uh, this new, the show will be now aired through Landcast. Um, so um, some of our world uh, viewers, even from YouTube, will be able to see this even wow. more so. Uh, now, you've been invited to China. You might, uh, if you would, tell us a little bit about that. Oh my gosh, that was really wonderful. That was really special. Uh, they, what they did was they wanted some of the country's best artists, the, not just country, but around the world. And they they brought in these watercolors from around the world. They only brought in uh, four oil painters. Well, actually five. The fifth one uh, did not make it at the end there, but uh, she was from Ireland. And then uh, uh, there was an artist from Australia, and then two from here in America. And oh, I'm trying to think where there was a fourth one from. Um, but anyway, we, we basically were like an exchange and we went over and we taught a little bit and they traveled us around. We went to Inner Mongolia and we went down to Shanghai area where the ancient Venice villages are. And it was really, a, it was really just a, an honor and a treat. I mean, they, it was, they, they really made you feel special. Yes. I mean, they, it was just... You know, they did a great ceremony at the Great Wall with two, yes. two bands playing, all dressed up in full regalia. And yes. It was just absolutely amazing. Well, that's when we first was getting to um, know each other uh, as uh, artists or uh, uh, the TV, what have you. So I thought that it's always special that you was chosen and uh, that I could actually have a conversation about it with you uh, previously what about 2018 I think we visited first on uh, Spotlight on the Arts. Okay. Now yes. what uh, we've considering 2018, 2019 when we was last together um, and that's where we've dealt with the COVID-19. What has that been like for you as an artist? Has that affected your um, well, we all found time to paint, so... <laughs> yes, yeah, it, you know, it was a, a, it was a time for me to just, I, I just kind of became nobody. Yes, I just, same here. I just, you know, there were a lot of artists running around waving their arms saying, look at me, look at me, and I just, um, I just pulled back and I just, it made me think a lot about life, it made me think a lot about family, it made me think a lot about just who I am, and it, it was just an amazing time for reflection, and it was almost like we went back to, to years ago in the 70s. It, it just felt like time had moved backwards, and there were fewer people it seemed like you ran into. You know, I wore a mask all the time, so no one knew who I was, Yes. you know, and, and, and it was kind of nice, but uh, it was just a, it was just a strange Time. I looked at it the same way as a time to relax, time to reflect, time to paint, yes. time to reorganize uh, your thoughts on, on your values of life, family, yeah. as you said, and, yes. and the overall situation. When you go through a, a period like a pandemic or a crisis in your life or an experience like maybe your military experience, it gives you time afterwards to really, really evaluate your uh, position in this body, uh, you might say, and yes. the world that you exist in. Well, your world of art is uh, awesome, and uh, it uh, speaks well for you. For you, and uh, just Thank you. Uh, really honored to be here today with you in the studio. We're going to take a little bit of a tour and show you some uh, of what the studio looks like. This is an old barn yes, of yeah. the uh, old. 
family home a yes. place. Yeah, my grandmother used to milk cows in this room. Yes. Yes. So that gives you an idea. This, this will not, should we say, erected for the purpose of a studio, but it's being well filled, I'd say. You know, you can be complimented on the a space being well filled. I think Billy O'Donnell says it best. Yeah, I try to create my own space in here with this stone floor and the, you know, I carved the big column there, right there yes. with the big, you know, and just create my own space. Now, got to ask you, um, what are your plans now for, let's say, this year and next year? Uh, we're looking at, for the time frame, it's uh, 2021 already. Okay. And so I know there's different plein air um, uh, events coming up yeah. of um, not only the uh, Sedalia Visual Arts Association, which you might have received an invitation for that, and there's the um, uh, down at the Lake of the Ozarks area. Dr. Paul, Paula Brown. Uh, is she just a, contacted me to judge that show. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I talked with her uh, uh, three days ago oh. and passed your number on. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So I am, that's why I brought it up, okay. hoping that you did accept. Okay. So that's coming up in August. That's a five day event. Not only wow. painting uh, different locations that you choose, but also then the, uh, the judging. And then there's a, a nice dinner and presentation, what have you. So I'm very honored to know okay. that you have well, thank you. accepted that. I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. I, you know, I'm, I'm an easy person to contact. Yes, and uh, and, the, and there's a good reason for that also. You know? <laughs> I try to toot your horn as much as I can. You're a good man. Because I've thank always you. been honored to uh, be a part of your... Your, well, thank your you. world, shall we say. It is much appreciated. Thank you, sir. Um, I guess we uh, should take a short break. Is there anything else you'd like to cover along those lines? Well, you, you asked me, you know, what plans do I have and where I'm, I'm going. And, you know, for me, it's always been about the surface, of the painting, and creating my own unique marks in the thickness of the paint. And... You know, and getting it to still look very structurally well done as a painting. So, um, you know, we got a painting right behind you that right. has a nice thick surface on it. So that's really more the direction I'm going. It's so so I'm evolving as an artist. I'm changing yes. as an artist. So people will be able to look back and say, you know, we we can kind of tell when he did this be by the way. He painted, yes. and they can see that my palette is changing, it's getting brighter, getting richer, and getting thicker, you know, and it's been a process over the last 20 yes. years of, of going through that. Now, last time he was with, with me, uh, Spotlight of the Arts, in 2019, we talked about that, that we could see differences in your uh, start, and now you're changed, and we're just not ready for a break, and we're going to talk about more specifics of what Billy O is trying to describe uh, with the thickness of his paint. And uh, we'll be able to interject some of those, maybe some of those earlier painting shots that show the shall we say, evolution yes, to go. where he's coming to. And we'll discuss that thoroughly in a few moments. So I guess we should uh, take a break. Okay. And uh, really get into the nitty gritty. Uh, and I know everyone has their somewhat of their their life plan in there on the canvas so we'll see how this is involved uh, for uh, Mr. Billy o O'Donnell. So that's the story coming back at you after the break. Stay with us. We'll be right back for more. There's always a lot more on Spotlight on the Arts. driving recklessly? With your friends endangering your life? I'm here to tell you that reckless driving is the number one cause of teenage deaths. But with new and improved Slow Down, you don't have to die. 
He's right. We should slow down. In the real world, there is no spokesperson to prevent reckless driving. There's only you. Speak up. Kim, pay attention. Well, people would love to see the storage. Looks like a guy I saw at McDonald's. So this is my lair. This is where I create. My paintings have evolved over time. My paintings have become thicker. They're more about the marks and the structure of the paint. The colors have become, I believe, uh, a little bit more saturated. So my, my paintings keep evolving. So this was a painting that I did a while back. It was in the winter. And it this painting is probably about, oh, five years old or six years old. But it's got kind of a smoother surface. Uh, you can still see some texture. Now, there are times when I've done some really heavy impasto paintings that go back 20 years. But it's the thicker paint is creeping into my work. So this one has some good application of paint. This one has a little bit more of the richness of color that started happening and texture. And then this one up here, this one has a little bit of both to it. The um, uh, more texture, more color, uh, just, and it captures the time of day, that wet overcast day that is hard to capture when you exaggerate some things. I still paint the landscape and I, I paint uh, people doing things. So uh, my paintings are evolving all the time, but my focus primarily is Missouri. I still travel to Hawaii to paint Hawaii and South Carolina. I was just there and out west. Uh, and that seems to keep me plenty busy. And what I'd like to do is, is tell you a little bit about the surface. I've been doing a lot of research and developing uh, the right surface for me. And I'm using this uh, aluminum signboard that has a, a neoprene center, if I'm saying that correctly, that will last forever. And that aluminum, I will sand it and adhere linen to it, prime linen, and so this surface will be permanent. It will not have any stretching or, um, you know, in the heat and the cold, it will not expand and contract is what I meant, and the, the, the canvas will not sag in any way. So it's a, it's a very permanent surface. Uh, when you look at artists like uh, Alma Tadema, uh, he painted on copper plates and aluminum plates and he put the paint directly on those surfaces because they were permanent surfaces. They're ideal surfaces that won't really expand and contract and make the paint crack. And then the other thing I do is with my palette is I will mix a little bit of oil of clove into the paints to slow down the drying time. So by putting a little bit of oil of clove in my paints, it slows down the drying time on the paints and it allows me the ability to come back 
to revisit an area and maybe make changes that otherwise I wouldn't be able to do. And then the other important change has been for years and years and years I have I have used tubes of paint, these small 37 milliliters, which then I start moving on to the 100 milliliter. And then I start moving on to the caulk tube. Uh, and then the caulk tube I use with some colors, but then a lot of my colors I will use quartz of paint. So my cost for paints has gone up tremendously because I prefer to use pure paint and not try to add wax to it or anything else that are filler of some kind. I use pure paint on my paintings. <clears throat> the, uh, there is a dealer in Laguna Beach. You can uh, order these paints through and she can get you a better deal than, the, uh, than actually the, the company that makes this. And it's a real honor and pleasure to be here with you, Rick J doing this interview. Well, Billy O, I want to thank you for the opportunity to visit you here in your studio in Eureka, Missouri. It's really been a pleasure and uh, an honor to be by the with you. The pleasure and honor is all mine. You do a great interview. You ask great questions. And uh, uh, anytime I can get together with you and talk, I enjoy it. Thank you, sir. Same here. Okay, thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, that's another great Spotlight on the Arts coming to you from this time, Billy O'Donnell Studio in Eureka, Missouri. I thank you viewers again for watching. Rick J saying, see you next time. There's a lot more here on Spotlight on the Arts.